Want to learn a little bit more about networking and how to network like a pro? Stay tuned. Hi, I'm Stefan Bouchard, the Desert Bowtie Realtor out here in the Palm Springs region. I help people find, buy and sell homes and I absolutely love this business. Networking Nuggets is a podcast that is an exploration of business building through networking, social connections and digital media. The purpose is to build trust, grow our business, increase our referrals and build testimonials. How do you do? I'm back again. So today I have my friend Marika Walker from Sydney, Australia with Taylor's Property Management. Marika, would you like to introduce yourselves and tell us a little bit about your business and maybe a little snippet about how COVID's affecting you? Of course, Stephen. So, hi, everyone. My, as Stefan said, my name's Marika. So, Taylor's Property Management Specialist, as the name suggests, focuses on property management. Uh, the majority of our properties are in the eastern suburbs of Sydney. I'm sure you've heard of places like Bondi, where we've got properties there we look after, um, as well as the inner west and just over the Harbour Bridge in the lower North Shore as well. So our portfolio is mainly residential. We've got about 900 properties that we look after for just over 700 clients and we've been around for nearly 100 years a third generation business yeah so it's um you know mark's grandfather actually survived the depression and world war ii and managed to turn things around and have a successful business so there is you know good history and good stock there in the family um covid for us um sort of april when it hit really badly in new south wales as an example and sydney specifically was really quiet um, we've had higher vacancy rates in June than Mark, who owns the business, has ever seen. It went up as far as 5.8%. But we're working hard. Um, our vacancy is only around 2.3 for our portfolio. And we're um, coming back hard at COVID, negotiating, negotiating with landlords and tenants where we need to when we've got tenants in crisis and trying to help them and also out there looking for great tenants to put in the vacant properties to help out our landlords. Wow, good deal. So Marika, um, when we're talking about networking, of course, you and I met through BNI, Business Network International, and people have heard about that on my podcast quite a bit. But what I like to think about is venues or places for people to network that they don't think of as a common place to network. Because people always think of the chambers and they always think of BNI, so can you think of something outside of the ordinary? Yeah, so I think you can meet people through organisations like BNI, which, which I've done. But you can also go and create your own, your own networks and find them in different ways. Um, for example, through a sporting organisation and sharing a passion for a sport, like I play softball and by going out there and getting actively involved in the organisation and playing at different tournaments in Sydney and um, in other parts of Australia, you get to meet incredible people. And because you have already got something in common that you share, you start chatting about other things. And next thing you know, you're building, I guess, an organic sort of network that you can then refer to. And if people then need help, there's extra people that you know. And um, in addition to that, it means that the people that you already know that can help, you can say to all these people, I know someone. Um, and I think another great way was that um, from a property management perspective, um, I joined a, a group. So we had someone come in to do some training for the team. And she, her name was Tara Bradbury and she was part of another network and they would host seminars where you could go along if you were involved in property management and, and share um, ideas and learn more things from people that were really taking it to that next level. And as a result of that, it's then meeting people attending those conferences and so who come from other parts of Australia. Um, and as a result of that, we now know property managers who are amazing um, all around the country. So if we have an investor that says, I'm looking at buying a property in Queensland, we can say, well, we know someone who will manage it well and take care of it for you. So 
there are different ways of, of creating other networks that have really worked for me. Yeah, wonderful. Thank you. So do you do anything to prepare for these kind of events or materials that you take along? Um, when I've been to the training sessions, I guess it's that whole thing of always having a business card with you. Yeah. Um, but I found that with the, the networking with these other people outside things like B and I, it's been more just chatting and talking in the first instance and then the sharing of the information down the track as it's needed. So it's more, I guess, sort of taking the approach of you're inviting someone to into your home, you want to make them feel welcome and just sort of taking it from there. Mm -hmm. But for those of you that are listening that don't have a bunch of information at your fingertips practice. So what, uh, what I also think also is you, you got to know what it is that you want to say. So we're, we're blessed with Business Network International because it's trained us. And we're taught over and over and over again about building relationships, building trust, and having a 30, 60, 90 second um, elevator pitch, you know, so how you can talk about yourself. So those are always a great way to start, in my opinion. You know, it's always great to have that as a starting point. But after that, it's really just about building the relationship. Exactly. And for people that don't feel as confident sort of getting out there or have had that much experience with talking to people and having their pitch, the more you put yourself out there, the more it becomes comfortable and natural. Yep. I mean, you look at us, I mean, um, because of BNI as an example going online, you may be stuck in your town or your state or your country and not be able to travel, but you can go to BNI online, choose a chapter that you'd like to visit anywhere in the world, yep. go and meet people, you know, and I love what we did together, you know, from taking our one-to-one -to, -one to then saying, well, let's get your property people and our property people, let's just all catch up and have a one-to-one, -one, as they call it in B&I talk, and just sharing ideas and knowledge. And some of the, the conversations and ideas that came out of something spontaneous were just fantastic. So, you know, there's so many different ways to build relationships, but I think you then need to you know, then pursue those and not just have it as a one off and okay, great, thanks. You know, you just, you've got a great starting point. It's just like, go with it. Even if it's a catch up once every couple of months, you know, you put all that effort into building and talking about yourself, learning about others and just keeping it going. Perfect. What do you do to educate yourself or keep yourself going or inspire yourself? Feed the mind. Um, well, one thing is to catch up regularly, um, and I'm just putting the, um, talking about the BNI networking group again as an example. So, regularly catching up with people that are both involved with property and finance, mainly for me, things that will help our clients grow their wealth through property. So it's always it's just sort of hearing different experiences that people are having in different parts of those journeys, so that. When I'm talking to, to clients, I'm aware of what's going on and not just in property management in the eastern suburbs. So it's just trying to keep that awareness open. Um, there's also some really interesting blogs and podcasts that are available and, you know, even going back to some fantastic books out there. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of information out there. It's just, you know, having the, the time and, and seeing the value in that time of constantly educating yourself through talking to others and, and self-research. Excellent. Do you have a funny story to tell us about networking? Um, not so much networking that I can think of, but definitely a story about a lesson sort of learned I guess from the whole softball thing so I'm only new to softball and started playing about three years ago because my daughter got into a, a rep team so and I thought oh gee this is a fun sport I'll get into it and then our catcher got injured so I thought oh, that's okay I'll learn how to catch I can still bend my knees and get down and get up and throw a ball that's fine so I was like, yeah, I can catch. And then this group of women that I met were playing in a master's competition up in near the Great Barrier Reef, up in Cairns in Queensland. So I was like, yeah, I'll go and, and join in and, and have fun. And I had to get up at 
four in the morning. My alarm didn't go up. Didn't go off. I got up at five. Threw everything in a bag. Raced to the airport. Just made the flight. Arrived off the plane. I think it was like two or three hours later. Went, got met, taken straight out to the diamond, and was told, "Oh, Marika, welcome. You're catching." So it really it was like, okay, no so it was just a really good um, lesson in you got to put yourself out there and be prepared to do something. Make sure you know what you're doing because you're never gonna, you never know when you're going to be put on the spot and asked to perform. So, and we won that game. So it was a really good result. You did win the game. Pardon? You guys did win the game. Yeah, we did. And overall, in the whole Masters tournament, we ended up um, getting third. So really. Wow. Really exciting. How, it, how was it being catcher? I love it. Okay, good. It, you've just got to focus. You're, always, you're watching what's happening in the game. You know, you're, you're there to support the pitcher and um, just being there for them. And, you know, there's such a wonderful team. They're called the Angels that I play for. Oh, um, but it's like, throw me anywhere. It's just, it's my happy place being on a softball diamond. Excellent. So the lesson learned there that I want to put an exclamation point is, is be willing to try something new, even though you don't know what you're doing, because you never know in the long run, you might actually love it and be freaking good at it. That is perfect summary, Stefan. That is exactly, yeah, 100% support that one. Thank you for bringing that together. <laughs> and it translates to everywhere in our lives, not just softball it's like life it's networking it's like try to i always tell people try something you don't know until you try you know exactly. yes it's scary of course because we haven't done it before <laughs> if you don't know if you don't try you'll never know exactly exactly so you actually answered my next question which was something you learned that surprised you so you you just went over that very length well in that story so it was wonderful and i loved you talking about you know getting up early to go to the airport uh my, my husband and i went to queensland we went to um also went to uh great barrier reef and we're diving up there so i remember getting up early and getting on the airplane and yeah it was like a three-hour flight to go north <laughs> <laughs> Like, it's so worth it when you get there. It didn't seem that far away, but Australia is a huge continent. <laughs> I know, and I think that's why we travel so much, not only because we're isolated, but for us to jump in a car for two, three hours, four hours is nothing. Yeah. You go to Europe and you can almost be across two or three countries in the same space and time. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Oh, plus everything in Australia is seems to be around the continent. Everything's on, you know, the coast. There's not a lot inside. Um, no, there's a big desert. I mean, there is interesting places like you have Uluru, sort of towards in the centre in the Northern Territory. Uh -huh. um, but, yeah, there's there's a lot of... I guess farmlands and dry areas in the centre. So most people, most tourists tend to go to the the east coast. Some go to the west coast. But I think because of the size of the country, there's so much diversity and so many incredible experiences that you can have here in Australia. And then you've got Tasmania, that incredible little separate island at the bottom, but still part of us. So. Um, yeah. Once the once you can travel again, if there's people listening that haven't been to Australia before, it's a beautiful country with amazing people and fantastic history. I can vouch for that. I ooh, I remember a story. Okay, bear with me, people that are listening or watching. <laughs> we arrive at the airport in Sydney. Of course, what is one of the first things you got to do when you get off a plane, especially after you've been on a plane 15 hours? You got to go to the toilet, right? So. We're, we hadn't picked up our bags yet, or we had. Um, anyway, went to the loo, and unfortunately, when I walked out of the loo, I left my phone, my cell phone, on the toilet. Oh, no. We're down in the, the underground getting ready to take a train, and I realize, oh, my God, I don't have my phone. I run back into the terminal, leave my husband behind in the train station. I go all the way back to the toilet. Of course, it's not there find a security person they're like oh don't worry about it it'll turn up you know one of the stewards picked it up and it, it'll be in lost and found in a couple hours and i'm thinking with a u.s mentality i'm like oh hell no that thing's long gone 
<laughs> God, how, how am I going to replace my phone while I'm in Australia? This is going to be a challenge. Damn it. So I go down, tell husband, and he's like, well, let's go up to the lost and found and, and you know, do what they told you to do and, and put in your name and number. And so that's what we did. So we went up to the lost and found and put in our name and number. And they said, okay, we'll call you when it gets turned in. And again, I'm like, <laughs> What do you mean when? It's gone. <laughs> and everybody's like, oh, don't worry. It'll be back. It'll be back. We'll, we'll, we'll call you in a little bit. And then we get to the, to, the, to the inn that we were staying at. And literally, we're done checking in. And somebody calls on Ray's phone. Hey, we got your phone. <laughs> so we store our bags and we go back to the airport to pick up my phone. The long story short is... People are so honest in Australia, and that's what really struck me. So, like, the first day, I mean, that could have been a nightmare of an experience. And the bottom line was everybody we were talking, oh, it'll, don't worry, it'll turn up. It'll, tur so it'll get turned into, you know, lost and found. And I'm like, that would have never happened in America. That would have never happened. <laughs> <laughs> that phone would have been gone. Somebody would have pawned it or something. It would have been gone. So. Oh, anyway. that's fantastic! I'm so glad you had a happy ending to that story. Oh my God. It was the first day. It was it was it was so much fun. So, do you have anything to add about networking that we haven't talked about here? I think we've pretty much covered a lot of it. Yeah, we have. Um, I think networks are very important now that we are as a planet in various stages of lockdown. Um, just to just to keep those networks going and to, to take the time out like we're doing now and 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 have a chat on Zoom and, and stay connected, whether it's just to chat to someone if you're not having a great time or you know that you know that there's people that need help or just to just to catch up and just sort of say over oh, coffee even online if you need to and and just keeping keeping those connections going because it's not going to be forever, touch wood. It's something that we're all going through now. And how wonderful it's going to be when we can see each other. You know, I, I'm definitely hoping to get over to California when I can and then come along to one of your networking breakfasts and get to meet you in person. That'll be fantastic. Yep. Look forward to live, live meets again. Yes. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you for helping me laugh. Um, <laughs> James, a wonderful story. And um, I really appreciate you taking the time out. So thank you very much. Oh, it's my absolute pleasure. It's been so lovely seeing you again. And it's the day starting for us here in Sydney. I imagine the evening there for you. So I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful one, Stefan. Thank you. If you're thinking about buying or selling in the Palm Springs region, don't hesitate to give me a call, text, or email. All my information is below. Now, I'll see you on my next video where I'm interviewing Nelson Dueza, also from Sydney, Australia.